No matter how much an antique sewing machine is clean, polished, and shined, it'll never have the eye-catching beauty it had when it was first made until its gold filigree decals are replaced, which creates two problems. First, commercially produced decals are limited to Singer and Wilcox Gibbs sewing machines. Sadly, all other makes are out of luck. Second, and more seriously, these decals simply don't look anything like the real gold artwork originally used because they don't use real gold. Because of this, they lack the unique depth of color, warmth, and luster only pure gold can provide. This video will show how anyone can recreate 24 karat gold decals with an inkjet printer, clear water slide decal paper, and a few gold leafing supplies. Now I'm not going to fool you. This can be an expensive, frustratingly difficult project, but the results are spectacular. So let's get started. The machine being used for this demonstration is an 1888 Jones Swan Neck. Now normally, restoring such a machine would ruin its original finish and therefore destroy much of its collectible value. That doesn't really apply for this particular machine because it's in such poor condition that it doesn't really have any collectible value. When we got it, one leg was broken completely off and had to be welded back on. The Japan finish is worn down to the bare metal in several places. Many spots are chipped, creating craters in the surface that are unattractive. All of the metal was rusted and severely pitted. Over half of the gold decorations are missing and the other half are so worn and damaged uh, that they're very unattractive and not really worth anything. The only value this type of machine would have to a collector, sadly, is for spare parts. In fact, the base's carnation and rose decal is completely missing because it was removed, probably cannibalized to restore a better machine. So, restoring it won't decrease its value because it doesn't really have any. However, a good restoration will do two things. It'll increase its value in the decorative market, and more importantly, because it'll look great, there's a much better chance it'll be taken care of, and in so doing, last many more decades. In its present condition, it's almost a candidate for the scrap heap. For this demonstration, I'm focusing on creating a 24 karat gold leaf decal to replace this area of filigree. The process is the same for any decal. The first thing to do is to take a good picture of what's available. Worn spots will be taken care of later. If the decal is completely missing, shining a bright light glancing along the surface may produce a ghost image of the decal, which may be enough to recreate it. If that doesn't work, search online for images of the sewing machine. There's almost always at least one uncopyrighted image of the area needed good enough to work with. And here it is. Now, if you took your picture off of the internet or handheld camera, there's a chance that there's going to be some distortion because the camera was at an angle relative to the decal you're trying to recreate. If that's the case, then you're going to have to go and use your distort functions on whatever photo processing software you're using to take out the perspective distortion so that you have an even straight level decal to, to work with. In this case, I was able to point the camera straight at this decal area that I want to reproduce. I'm not worried about some of it being blotted out by part of the uh, sewing machine because I'm only going to use half of this, the good half. This half had a lot more damage. So the first thing I did is use your crop tool to select just the portion of the decal I want. Okay. Next, I want to change this to black and white. Convert to black and white. Newspaper usually works good for me. All right. Now, what we have here is not really black and white. It's grays and uh, light grays. So to increase the contrast, because what we're going to want to go to is a pure black and white image, I'm going to go up to Enhance, Adjust Lighting, Brightness and Contrast, and run the contrast up to max. That will pretty much make sure that all these blacks are black and all the whites are pure white. Sometimes what you'll need to do is also increase the brightness but in this case, actually, that looks a little bit better. 
Okay, so we're well on our way. Next, what we need to do is eliminate all of the glare and the decals that we're not going to be using. So I'm going to go to Pencil. Black. And start erasing it. I mean, uh, coloring over it. Try not to eliminate any of the decal that you want. Well, you get the idea. What we're going to do next is enlarge it, and then using the eraser button, erase all of the worn off area here. All we want is the decal that we want to be in gold to be pure white. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to print this out on color slide paper and then cover that with gold leaf. The printer, and I'm using an inkjet, does not print white. It just leaves that blank. It will print the black, though. So when we put gold on this, and eventually, and I'll explain why, we're going to turn the decal upside down. The gold will show through the areas that appear white here, and the areas that appear black will look black because the black is covering the gold. You'll see the effect in a minute. And here we are, half an hour later. And I know what you're thinking. My gosh, if it takes a half an hour to do this small piece, how long is an an entire machine going to take. I'll be honest with you, it's going to be hours and hours and hours. But remember, you're recreating something that hasn't existed for over a century. And you have to figure that that's going to take some time. And I think to save one of these machines, it's well worth the effort. Plus, once you've made it, uh, the masters for a decal set like this, if you meet anyone else, either online or personally, who has one of these machines, you can provide these to them and give them a leg up on rest restoring their own machine. But let's go on and finish this particular decal. First, I'm going to select all, edit, copy, select, deselect. Now I'm going to increase the size so of the canvas so that we can complete the, the symmetry, both sides of it. So image, resize, canvas size. I'm going to go this way, and I want it to be, say, 20 inches. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to rotate, flip horizontal, edit, paste. Grab it. And there we go. Let's merge it so it's all one piece, and then we'll cut this edge off. And there we go. This is the completed master for the decal for that one area. Now, if this had had some writing on it, letters, what you'd have to do now is do a reverse because when we apply the decal we're actually going to be applying the decal upside down so you have to reverse it now so that when the decal is reversed the letters are right side up and readable the last thing we need to do before printing is to resize it so it's the correct size to match the decal on the machine so uh, image resize image size now i've measured it on mine and it needs to be about two inches across. And we'll set it at 300 DPI. There we go. File, save. And now we can print it. And here we go. This first sheet contains some of the other decals needed for this restoration. I've had good luck with Tester's clear water slide decal paper, but other brands may work just as well. After letting the sheet dry for several minutes, I spray it with a clear coat such as Design Master Clear Gloss Finish. 
Spray just enough to create a smooth, even, glossy finish. You don't want big puddles. After that, I let it dry at least two full days to fully cure. Here's what the completed decal set looks like. Altogether, it took 14 hours to create it. Most of that time was taken up recreating the leaves and the central logo decal. Earlier I mentioned that this central decal was a flower pattern. Research Sense suggests that it was the Jones hand machine decal we see here. And since I prefer being historically accurate, I switched to this one, even though it's not as attractive. Next, they have to be cut out, backed with gold leaf, and finally applied to the machine. To create a decal, you need the decal cut out, and you want to cut it as close to or right on the edge of the decal lines as possible. That will help hide the ridge that the edge of the decal creates. A piece of decal paper that's slightly larger than the decal itself. Gold leaf. Gold leaf size. This is a glue used to stick the gold leaf to the back of the decal. A poncing brush. This is a very soft, high bristle count brush used to tap the gold leaf down onto the decal to make sure that it's in full contact. Uh, these can be quite expensive. I found that Walmart carries this one, which is a makeup brush, and it works really well, especially for smaller decals such as this one. I like using some micro set. This is a liquid that helps adhere the decal to the surface. Uh, some water, a pair of tweezers, and an old worn out handkerchief. I find this works about the best. You want something that's so worn it's almost transparent. You don't want a new fuzzy one because that will transfer, as you'll see in a minute, potentially some fuzz to the back of the decal. And we don't want that. So, let's get started. Oh yeah, it's really important to work in a tightly closed room with the air conditioner or heaters turned off because gold leaf is extremely light and easily blown away. You also want to control your breathing around it because just one small breath and you, you could lose a whole sheet. So we start by taking our worn out handkerchief and get just barely a drop of the size on the handkerchief. Then we very gently tap all over the surface of the decal. You want a thin, even layer. Switch to a dry section of the handkerchief and tap off, don't rub, that creates streaks. Tap off all of the extra gold size. You want a very thin layer because the gold size itself is not transparent and if you get it between the gold and the clear decal, you're going to see it. This will dry almost instantly. Carefully pull up the cover sheet, apply the decal upside down, and gently tap it like that. Now the gold leaf isn't that expensive. It's uh, $40 for 25 sheets that are about 3 by 3 inches. Uh, but you don't want to waste it. So one of the ways I found to save as much as possible is to, after you've put your decal on there, push the edges down just past the decal. And now you can pull the decal off and only the gold leaf stuck to it will be pulled away. If you don't hold it down like that, you can pull a whole sheet out. And we're done with that. Now use your poncing brush to very gently tap the gold down all over the decal. You want to also work the edges so that any loose pieces of gold are brushed away. If you don't do this, when you apply the decal, it's going to look sloppy. Now sometimes you'll find a spot doesn't get gold on it. If that happens, just pick up a piece of loose gold and apply it and you should be able to fill that in. 
And there you go. Now this is where things get weird because obviously this doesn't look much like the gold leaf decal we want. So here's where the magic comes in. What we're going to do is wet the back of this and slide the decal off. Wet the back of this and slide the transparent cover off of this and throw that away. And then put the gold surface onto the paper. And what that's going to do is some of the adhesive that's on the paper that holds the decal to the surface will transfer to the gold and that's what will give us our decal. So first we apply just a little bit of water, a few drops, it doesn't take much. You don't want to soak this in water because if you do the glue gets diluted and it doesn't hold as hard. There we go, let that sit for a second. Here's our extra piece. This is where we're going to get the glue for the gold. Oh, wrong side. Okay, and it should just take a second or two for the glue to soften up. And you can peel off that piece of decal, which we don't need anymore. And you've got a layer of paper with glue on it. Now you do the same to your decal and apply it right to the paper. It's best to, do, to slide it as little as possible because sliding can wear off the glue. And there's your decal. 24 karat gold, and you can see now that the black ink from the inkjet is blocking out everything except where we want the gold to be. Okay, now I take some of the micro set, use this to prep the area where the gold decal is going to go. Now comes the tricky part, making sure you have it right where you want it because you may not have a lot of working time. Slide the decal off the paper. Onto the area you want it and smooth it out. And really, once you've turned it upside down to create the gold leaf decal, the decal application itself is no different than what you'd use for a plastic model. Once it's centered the way you like it, very carefully dry it off. Don't apply too much pressure or you can drag the decal off center. You want to work out any air bubbles or liquid bubbles that are under, under the surface so that it is very smooth. And there you go, 24 karat gold decal. Now what's nice about this is that the surface of the decal, the clear surface, is actually on top of the gold so that you already have your clear coat protection for the gold. There's just one problem with this process, and that is the clear part of the decal shrinks ever so slightly. So where you have decal that was cut away that is against black, it's going to pull back and you're going to find that you have a hair thin line of gold because the gold doesn't shrink. What you need to use is a black pen to block out those so that you don't see those lines.
but that's a small problem. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. Here's a close-up of how it turned out. Decals that combine gold leaf with colored effects require an extra step. And the problem is, is, although this green ink looks very opaque, in fact, it's transparent. So if I apply gold leaf over this and then turn the decal upside down so we get the gold leaf effect, what you're going to end up with is go green colored gold, which is attractive but not historically accurate. What you need to do is prevent the gold from showing through. And what I found works good is to use a pen touch opaque white marker. I've tried several and this seems to be the best. To cover the colored area, whether in this case it's the, the green surrounding the uh, shield or flowers or whatever you're dealing with, uh, with a layer of white opaque ink. And usually it takes uh, two layers with this, letting them dry between. And what this does is it prevents the gold from shining through. So that when you turn this over, you'll have a nice green solid area of color. As I mentioned at the start of this video, making and applying a set of 24 karat gold leaf decals is an enormous amount of work. Figure 20 hours each for either this Wilcox Gibbs or the Jones Swan that used in this video. What you get for all this work is the deep, warm color and brilliant luster only pure gold can provide. If you're serious about restoring an antique sewing machine to its original glory, I hope you'll consider this technique for recapturing what it looked like when it was brand new over a century ago. For more articles covering hundreds of topics, please check out my main website at waynesthisandthat.com. As always, thank you very much for watching.